Hello everyone, thanks for watching the video. This is a video that's been 21 episodes in the making. If you're new to the channel, I have been building my own DIY travel trailer in my driveway for the past year and a half. I've been documented on my YouTube channel and I thought I would finally make a video on some of the mistakes that I've made because I have zero trailer building experience. I'm just an average Joe handyman, outdoors guy, and I decided to make my own travel trailer a few years ago. Um, of course, I have made mistakes, and I'm not going to uh, pretend that I've done this entire build without making a lot of screw-ups. So to keep with the integrity of the build and all these people that have followed around, I thought I would show you some of the mistakes that I made, and to help you if you're doing this yourself, not make those same mistakes and learn from my build. So before we get into my top five mistakes, I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors that make all this possible. Princess Auto, where I've got most of my parts from, Cabela's and Bass Pro Shop, Battleborn Batteries, and Diamondback Covers. Much appreciated for all their help and assistance in creating my content. So a lot of these are not so much mistakes as opposed to me making a decision to save money. I knew the right way to do things, but I was hesitant to spend the money to do the right things. When I did this build, I, have no, I had no idea where this was going. I really didn't know um, how much this was going to cost. And um, you know, my lovely wife gave me kind of a green light to, to kind of try this, but I still realized that I really had to kind of rein in the spending. So I thought I might as well go chronologically in the build and start off with some of the first things that I would redo or do over. So the first mistake we'll get into is choosing an axle. I chose a 3,500 pound axle based on a couple of factors. Basically, Princess Auto um, was going to help me out with an axle. Their store, they have great selection, but it was limited. So I had to decide whether I want to go with a 3,500 pound axle or a 6,000 pound axle. I should have went with the 6,000 pound axle, but the it was a little wider than I wanted to go with. I really wanted to keep my trailer seven feet wide. I didn't want to expand it too much. I had zero experience on trying to plan like hub width and spacers and how much the wheels are going to stick out, wheel wells, all that stuff. So I, I needed to design my frame around what axle I was going to go with. I was excited to get the build going. So I chose a 3,500 pound axle. All the trailers I found online that were single axles, some of them were um, you know, 18 feet long. Now granted they were professional trailer companies, but I figured, okay, if they're making 18 foot trailers, even though I'm doing mine, it's probably gonna be much heavier. I probably would be safe with a 3,500 pound axle. And the 3,500 pound axle that Princess Auto had fit my dimensions that what I wanted. So I decided to go with that. Realistically now, the trailer is probably going to be close to 3,500 pounds, if not creeping over. I never wanted to be maxing out the uh, capacity on it. I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. So in the future, I'm probably going to have to swap it out. And realistically, now that the frame is already built, I'm committed to those dimensions. So I'm probably going to have to have a custom um, axle uh, constructed, which is going to cost me more money than if I would have just done it properly the first time around. So number one mistake, I should have just went with a 6,000 pound axle and designed the frame around that. Number two mistake, the frame itself. The frame, I think, is a work of art. I designed the frame. I had my buddy Andrew from Windsor Metalworks weld it for me. It was a great partnership. I got a video here if you want to see how it was welded and built. Everyone told me once I got the steel frame built, have it powder coated or treated properly with some line X or that sort of thing. If I had to do it again, I certainly would have done that. But I cheaped out again. Uh, afraid of the expense of getting it powder coated or line X'd and the time frame and wanting to do things myself. So um, I literally coated it with some uh, Flex Seal that once I kind of experimented with it, I really thought it would give it a solid like waterproof coat and it wouldn't be any issues. Um, that has been a failure. Now I'm going to kind of have to sand off the frame. It's got a lot of surface rust on there. So now I'm going to have to go back spend a lot of manual labor cleaning up the frame and getting it done properly with a, a different coating. Um, so that is definitely my number two mistake. If I had to do it all over again, I certainly would have done that differently. Third mistake hands down was the wheel selection. Again, keeping with the theme of trying to cheap out and save money and someone gave me the idea of buying some old Jeep wheels because when people upgrade their Jeep rims, 
they, uh, they tend to sell them and you can get them for cheap. So I went online and found a wheel set of five for $200. So I really liked the rims. It was gonna go with what I had in mind. I wanted big tires for clearance on some of the roads that I'll be going on. And I decided to go with these. Love the look of them. It looked, it looked, they look great on the trailer. But I screwed up here in a couple of different ways. First of all, trailer tires need to be specifically designed for a trailer. So a tire needs to have ST on the side of it, which stands for standard trailer tire. And not only are they designed for trailers, but in some provinces and probably states, legally you need to have them on a trailer. So I have been running with these Jeep tires for a while and knowing that is the wrong thing to do. Um, I've been on enough trips with it now where I'm starting to worry that I'm um, just kind of uh, pressing my luck with you know, something going wrong. So I-75, the 401 here in Canada, I've been on uh, some long trips with it and I don't want to have any accidents on the road. So I'm switching these out with a wheel set that I got from Princess Auto. These are 18 inch rims. Trailer tires generally, the biggest rim you can get is a 16 inch rim. How this is all complicated is the, um, the axle, again, this is all tied into making big mistakes, but the axle I have is a five on four and a half stud spacing. These Jeep tires required a spacer to make them five by five so I could fit these Jeep rims on the axle that I had. So the problem with trailer rims that are 16 inches, generally I can't find any that are anything but eight lug rims. So now I have to get another adapter for my axle. So my axle is five, four and a half stud pattern and I just got some adapters in the mail that will let me fit a uh, eight lug rim on, which I'll be switching it off. Another thing dealing with the tires that I screwed up is the space between the wheel well and the tire. The leaf springs on here don't have a lot of flex, so there's not a lot of suspension that really bounces around. But as the trailer has gotten heavier, uh, the space here has uh, decreased, and now I've noticed that it's starting to rub on the wheel well. So the tires that I'll be swapping it out with are also a little smaller in diameter, so that should give me enough distance between the wheel well and the, and the wheel and the tire to um, alleviate that problem. So again, the whole suspension, if I had to do it all again, um, put a lot of thought into the axle, the wheels that you're going to be using, and again, you design your frame around your axle, so that's very important. So yeah, so number three is definitely the wheels. Would have done that all differently. And then I'm gonna miss the look of these Jeep tires. Uh, they're going and um, I got some new tires that I'm spray painting black and I think it'll look pretty good. But I know it'll be a lot safer. So for mistake number four, we're gonna go inside the trailer and one of the first things I did was put down flooring. And that is going to turn out to be a mistake. I am confident of it. Right now it's been good, but I uh, laid down kind of a laminate uh, hardwood flooring that locks into place. It's supposed to be waterproof, but it is a pressed uh, wood backing underneath it. And I have a feeling it's not going to hold up. It's already not exactly scratch resistant. And I knew about vinyl flooring, vinyl hardwood flooring. I literally helped my brother-in-law install some at his house and uh, I knew all about it, and quite frankly, I have no idea why I didn't choose to go with vinyl flooring. Um, I have a feeling that when there's a, some water resting on here, it's gonna seep through the seams and, and probably give me some problems. So if I had to do it all again, I definitely would not have used this flooring and would have put down uh, vinyl hardwood flooring. But uh, hopefully I'll keep my fingers crossed and see how this goes, but it, uh, it definitely, I'm sure, will be a mistake. And mistake number five in this video is definitely what I did with the wiring to start out. By the time I got this framed in and enclosed and I was ready to start wiring it, um, I, you know, I was starting to think that maybe I was in over my head. I had some basic knowledge of household wiring. I've done uh, some breakers and breaker boxes in, in uh, my old basement at my old house. So um, I just thought that for the AC, I would be able to run a standard household 14-2 wire through here, solid wire and um, I did. And the system that I had in place actually did work because what I did was I ran uh, like a standard household wiring setup to um, a battery, a portable battery pack that I would just plug it in into the trailer and the lights would come on and I had a couple of outlets that I could plug things in and it really did work. 
over the years, as I researched, I realized that was a really bad decision. First of all, you should never use solid wire in something that's bouncing around, van builds, trailers. Um, you needed to use stranded wire. So that was a mistake, and I knew that I was going to have to basically rip out all that wire, which I have done. And the system that I had in place, um, I really didn't know what I was doing as far as a uh, DC fuse panel and what I was going to do for an AC panel. And I really spun my wheels for a good six months of wasting my time and just being stressed out about the electrical part of this. Um, I wish I just would have committed to doing one thing and, and having it done. Um, I was so overwhelmed that I was actually tempted to have it outsourced because I invested so much in this trailer and I didn't want an electrical fire burning it to the ground. So that was really stressful. I have to give a shout out to Explorers Life, um, their YouTube channel and their uh, website as well. Uh, Nate is um, a guy who does van builds mainly and I have no affiliation with Nate. I've just happened to be a fan of his channel and his uh, website. And quite frankly, uh, I would not have got this done without his um, um, designs, really. So I, uh, so I committed to following his uh, blueprint on one of his builds. And with Battleborn's help, I was able to wire this properly. And uh, there'll be a full video on the actual electrical and the install of the Battleborn setup. But I'm proud to say that I've finally got it done and it's actually working. And probably my biggest accomplishment that I'm proud about is not even the trailer build itself, the wiring, because I was so stressed out about it and almost willing to give up on it. And just being stubborn as I am, I refuse to just not do everything myself in this build. So I did do it and uh, I'm very proud of it. But my fifth mistake was doing all the wiring and solid wire and treating it like a house. And that was a mistake. And I wasted a lot of time and I wasted money doing that. So that is the fifth mistake. Okay, so that's going to wrap up my top five mistakes with the build so far. As you can see, the inside of the trailer is still a work in progress. There's still a lot that I have to do, putting solar panels on, putting an awning on, lots of different things. But I hope you appreciate the honesty that I'm trying to give to you with this build. I have no trailer building experience. I have no background in this. I am simply a DIY guy that's winging it and I'm just trying to do my best. And so far it's worked out and I'm extremely proud of it. But I want to share the build completely and that just is not the successes, but also the failures. And uh, you know, I got no problem uh, giving you both sides of it. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe so you can watch the entire trailer build and also the adventures that I go on it and see how it holds up. And uh, that's going to be it. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.